Hi, I'm John Sifferman from physicalliving.com where I teach health first fitness and physical culture to my readers around the world. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you the correct, the optimal way of performing the basic body weight lunge exercise. I'm going to cover the, the static lunge, the forward lunge, and the reverse lunge. They're all very similar, um, but there are some subtle differences, and we'll talk about that. Um, seen a lot of sloppy lunges uh, around the southern New Hampshire area and online. And I want to make sure that uh, I get this information out there so that if you're wondering how to perform lunges correctly, that you have a resource that you can um, draw from to learn it so that you can benefit um, from it and maximize your results from training. Because it's a great exercise. I think it's a foundational exercise. It should be a part of every single well-balanced fitness program or strength and conditioning program. Um, and this video will teach you how to maximize your results and benefits you receive from it while minimizing the risk of injury. So I'll just show you, I'll just show you what the exercise is. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cover three different kinds. Um, there's, a, there's a static lunge, which is just like so. There's also a forward lunge. And then a reverse lunge as well. So you see they're all very similar. Um, there's just some subtle differences in how you perform them. And these are just a few body weight versions of lunges. There are tons of variations. There's lateral lunges, plie lunges, uh, weighted lunges, plyometric lunges, uh, twisting lunges. You, add, you can do them with a barbell, with a, a dumbbell, with a couple kettlebells, with club bells. You can do them dynamically with all sorts of different movements. So we're just going to co cover the foundational body weight versions um, today. And the reason I'm covering these is because you need to get these right before you go and attempt the uh, intermediate and advanced level variations. The principles and techniques that you learn from this video are going to carry over and transfer to better lunge performance uh, regardless of the, the type that you're doing. So even if you don't do these three types of lunges, maybe you do barbell lunges or uh, some sort of uh, lateral or plie lunge, um, this information will also apply to you. I just simply can't cover all the lunge variations in one video. At least I haven't figured out a way to do it. And it's very important to start with these foundational movements because it, it teaches good muscle memory, it teaches a good movement habit, and it teaches you to uh, apply force, um, not just effectively, but efficiently too, so that you can apply it over and over and over again and not uh, uh, get injured in the process, which is the ultimate uh, goal of training, is not to hurt yourself, right? And I think as uh, a health professional, a physical educator, just like uh, doctors um, uh, f uh, agree to do no harm. It's just part of their, their driving philosophy. That's, that should be part of the driving philosophy of every personal trainer. So you have to get your exercise technique dialed in. It needs to be right. There's a lot of wrong ways to do lunges, and I've seen probably uh, most of the kinds uh, over the years, uh, but there are there, there is a right technique that is it's just more optimal, and that's what we're going for. We're not going for perfection here. It's impossible to do an exercise perfect anyways because we all have different physiology and there's so many different variables involved, but we're always seeking to make our technique as smooth and efficient and controlled as possible. So let's talk about these lunge exercises, and please follow along. Test out the things that I'm, I'm talking about as you're watching. Don't just be a spectator. Be a participant. Um, in every single lunge exercise, unless there is a very specific condition otherwise, such as uh, like rotating at the spine, something like that, you need to keep your posture tall. And what I mean by that is, is trying, to, trying to elongate your spine in both directions throughout the full range of motion. So yeah, say you're doing a forward lunge, you don't want to hunch over at all with your back. You want to keep your spine as lengthened as possible. And where most people run into problems here is they have tight hips. We live in a predominantly sedentary culture. A lot of people sit down for long periods of time. When you're sitting down for a long period of time, these muscles in your hip, your hip flexor muscles, they get super tight. And you need to compensate for that um, in your training program. And if you're not regularly doing that, if you're not doing some form of compensatory, ex compensatory exercises where you're uh, doing maybe some joint mobility for your hips or some uh, stretching or yoga, and you're probably going to have trouble with a lunge exercise, uh, especially if you have very tight hips. The tendency will be for you to go into your lunge and lean forward at the hips because you're just you're so tight here. Um, and that's okay, but it's something you want to be aware of, something you want to work on. And you want to, you want to concentrate on keeping that spinal alignment. And if you keep your spine 
properly aligned, chances are your hips are also going to be uh, positioned the way that they should be. So, when doing any one of these lunge exercises, whether whether a, a static lunge or a forward lunge or a reverse lunge, you want to keep your, your posture tall. And you can do that just if you visualize um, lifting from the, the crown of your head. Imagine a, a cable drawing your, your crown upwards. So you're going to lift your head upwards and you're even going to tuck your tailbone slightly underneath just to reach it in the opposite direction. And this can be more passive than active. You know, when you're first learning it, you know, you can kind of, uh, you know, be more active about, okay, what's my tailbone doing? Okay, you know, try and tuck the tailbone underneath just a little bit. It's not an extreme tuck. It's just a slight tuck to lengthen your spine in both directions to get as much um, length as you can. Um, so you want to keep that throughout the full range of motion. Keep that lengthened spine, keep the head driving up, keep the uh, tailbone tucking slightly underneath. And when you go into, into these lunges, let's say you go into a reverse lunge, you, you might feel a little bit of a stretch on your hip flexor muscles. That's perfectly normal. Some personal trainers will actually uh, coach their clients to uh, make sure that they achieve that because doing lunges is a great way to open up your hip flexor muscles if you are uh, tight in that area. Um, you don't have to do it though to benefit from the exercise. And, and you'll find that the further that you step, the greater the stretch will be. Makes sense, right? Um, but you don't have to step super far. And generally speaking, the further out that you step, right, or the greater the distance between your, your two planted feet, you know, if I step like, you know, like really far, like even too far for me, the majority of the muscle work is going to be in the glute and hamstring muscles. Whereas if you have a, a much shallower step, you do a really short range of motion lunge, and that's perfectly okay. To do that, there's, you know, there's, there's very little reason to do one or the other. I, I recommend trying to find a, a, a happy medium, a balance between the two if you don't have a reason to do one or the other. But if you step a little bit more shallow, it's going to be more of a, a quadriceps dominant movement. And that's okay. If you tend to be, if you tend to use your quads more, if they're kind of uh, overdeveloped in comparison to your glute, and hamstring muscles, which again, a lot of people um, do have that issue because of our seated culture, then it might behoove you to focus on doing some uh, uh, wider distance lunges to compensate for that. So that is, that is the postural component. And you just want to maintain that good posture throughout the full range of motion. Very important. That's probably one of the bigger mistakes that I see with lunges is they lose the posture. And the reason why that's important is not only just because it's a bad habit and it puts unnecessary excess stress on your, your spine and all the surrounding musculature, but also it, it, you won't really notice it so much when you're doing, doing that, uh, making that mistake without additional resistance. If you're just doing a bodyweight lunge, it's, you know, it's easy to you know, just kind of hunch over and you don't really notice it. Oh, oh man, my legs are really working. This is great. You know, but when you add additional load to any lunge exercise, whether you're holding a dumbbell here in a goblet position, or you got a barbell on your back, or you're doing a club bell lunge, or, or a kettlebell rack lunge, um, that's when that posture is going to become very important. So you want to groove this good habit so that you have muscle memory, um, so that you're moving efficiently right from the start, because you will run into problems eventually if you don't get this right from the beginning. So, very important, maintain good posture. Now, legs. What are the legs doing? You know, we already know that you know, basically the movement involves either stepping forward or, or stepping backwards. But what are, the, what are the, the main components of that? Well, you want to have a hip width or shoulder width stance. Um, I recommend hip width as um, ideal. If you're very tight in your hips, it might be more comfortable to be in your shoulders. Uh, to be a shoulder width stance, just a little bit wider, that's okay. Um, you want to work with your body, not against it. And you want to... So if you're, you're super tight, then don't force any range of motion. So if your, your legs just feel kind of tight or awkward at a hip width stance, it's okay to let them go a little bit wider. But you want to avoid lunging with your legs almost, uh, I guess, uh, in, one, in one direct line. I can't think of the word. <laughs> you, you, you want to have some distance in between your feet so that you have just a little bit more balance, a little bit more stability. Um, you don't want to lunge and then feel like you're on a, on a tight wire. There's no reason for that. We're, 
we're building stability is what we're doing with that strength training. Stability through the legs, stability through the knees, through the hips. And so you want to have a stable platform to stand from. And if, you're, if your hips are this wide, that's how wide your, your feet should be, um, generally speaking. Um, so you want to avoid going too close and you want to go, you want to avoid going super wide unless you're using a, a specific targeted exercise for that purpose. Like I said, there's a lot of different lunge variations and each one has its own unique uh, pros and cons, uh, risks and benefits. So the next point when it comes to the actual lunging part and what you do with your legs is probably the most important point of this entire video. It's probably the number one thing that you haven't been taught um, by other lunge training experts. Um, and that is weight distribution, weight distribution on the underside of your feet. What I mean by that is when you lunge, let's say you do a forward lunge, you're absorbing some of your weight on that lead leg. You know, it's, it's, it's most, most of your weight is going to be absorbed, absorbed, I'm talking too fast for my own good. It's going to be absorbed in that front leg. You know, the back leg is more like a, a training wheel, uh, just for additional balance. You're doing most of the work with this front leg. So you want to absorb your body weight uh, with the entire underside of your foot. You don't want most of your body weight to be back on your heel. It's hard for me to even balance uh, without a proper alignment. Look at that. So you don't want most of your weight to be back on your heel. You don't want to be too far forward so that you're on your ball of foot or even kind of tempted to be on your ball of foot. And you also don't want your, your, your weight to be, look I can't even do it, to be uh, on the inside um, of your foot or on the outside. And you're probably thinking of right now, you probably just noticed. The best way to know if your weight distribution is proper, and especially if you're wearing shoes and you just can't really feel the ground as well. Um, anecdote, I do recommend doing uh, lunges in, uh, either barefoot or in very minimalist footwear, particularly footwear that does not have an elevated heel. Because if you have an elevated heel, it's going to change the mechanics. It's going to put a little bit extra stress on your knee. Again, unnecessary stress, and we want exercise to help us, not hinder us. We don't want exercise to increase our risk of injury. But what I was getting at is you want, you want the entire underside of your foot to be absorbing your weight. And you'll be able to tell that, if you're doing that right, if the knee is tracking directly over the foot. If your knee is coming in, chances are your weight's on the inside. If it's going out, it's on the outside. It's going really far forward in front of in front of your ankle, in front of your toes, maybe. Chances are most of your weight is going to be on your uh, toes and ball of foot. You want to avoid that for uh, two main reasons. One, you're increasing the risk of injury, particularly to the knee. Uh, when your when your knee comes too far forward, for example, in front of your weight, and you're putting a lot of load under here, particularly if you're you're using a heavy load you're putting a lot of stress on a little tiny ligament on the front of your kneecap. You want to avoid that. You want to instead establish a stable platform to apply force into the ground, which is what we're doing. We're building stability, again. And so you do that by distributing your weight on the entire underside of your foot. And so just, even right now, if you're, I hope you're following along and uh, practicing these little techniques, just, just try finding that, that stability. Go into a, a forward lunge or a reverse lunge. Use a support if you need to. Um, and just find that, that almost buoyancy where you know that your foot is driving directly down into the ground. You're, you're working with gravity instead of against it. And the reason we want to do that is because it's the most efficient and effective um, technique to optimize the exercise. You want to be able to push your, push your, your body straight down into the ground instead of at an angle. You know, because if I'm, if I'm like this and my knee is forward, then I'm, I'm literally pushing into the ground at an angle. If I really exaggerate, you'll be able to tell. Put this one down so that I can balance. But if, if my knee is coming in quite a bit, then obviously I'm pushing into the ground at an angle. And that's true even to a lesser degree. If it's only coming in a little bit, I'm still pushing in at an angle. We want to optimize our technique by pushing straight down into the ground using the entire underside of the foot. I can't stress that enough. And if you do that, then chances are all the knee alignment, the hip alignment, is, is going to take care of itself. So, what happens when you do get into that position? So let's say that you're, you're doing, we'll, we'll do a reverse lunge this time. You, you're going to do a reverse lunge, and what you're going to do is you're going to step your foot back, switch you know, weight transfer to one leg, step the foot back, 
and then you're going to absorb your body weight down. So you're not, you're not, you know, just balancing and then putting the leg back. You're slowly descending and absorbing your weight down. Most of your weight is on this front leg. Back one is a training wheel. Maybe 70% of your body weight on the front, 30% on the back, maybe 80, 20, who knows? Doesn't matter. The majority of your body weight should be on that front leg and you're absorbing as you come down. You're not smacking the ground. There shouldn't be any noise. It shouldn't be audible at all. You know, you're, you're like, a, like a cat or like a ninja. You're just coming down real smooth. And when you get into that bottom position, you can either uh, hover this back knee just above the ground or you can just touch it down. Don't put any weight on it just because it's unnecessary and it uh, much higher chance of injury if you do that, uh, especially as you build fatigue and add additional resistance. So I'd recommend either just hovering or just touch it down lightly to, to feel that contact and know that that's when you push up. Just like doing a, uh, uh, a box squat with a barbell. You just have that, that reference, that feedback that, okay, it's time to drive now. Same concept. Um, and when you drive, when you're, when you're uh, stepping back upwards, so you're in your lunge position uh, and you're going to press up, you're going to drive the, think about driving the earth away. So you're pressing, imagine you have like a, your shin is like a jackhammer and you're just going to press uh, suddenly into the ground. And you're, you're not going to bounce yourself up. It's going to be a smooth, steady, controlled, yet forceful movement to stand yourself back up. So pressing straight down, not at an angle, not forward, but pressing straight down and then press yourself back up to standing. Again, to that hip width stance. And it's the same exact thing with the, with the reverse lunge. Drive straight down, press back up. And when you're driving, there's a few different things happening. You know, you only really have to think about trying to push the ground away with that lead leg. That's the cue. And if you focus on pushing the ground away with that lead leg, all these other things will take care of themselves in most cases. But, you know, for uh, educational purposes, you know, what you're doing is you're, you're contracting the musculature of the quadriceps, the glutes, the hamstrings, all of this from the hips down is driving you back upwards. And so if it helps, you know, if you're, you're just not getting it and it helps, you can focus on, okay, uh, am I squeezing the quads? Am I really squeezing the glutes? Because it's, it's going to be primarily a glute and hamstring exercise. Um, so, you know, you go into your lunge and you say, okay, time to squeeze the glutes and squeeze both glutes. And, you know, it doesn't have to be any additional squeezing um, than is necessary. You know, because I can stand here and squeeze my glutes all day, it's not going to get me anywhere. You, you, you want to focus on the, the cue that is driving the ground away from you. Because this, this isn't a muscle activation exercise, it's a movement. Our bodies don't move by activating certain muscles. Our muscles activate because we're moving. And so we need to integrate that, that uh, element of, of self-coaching into our, our fitness programs so that we don't feel like we're slaves to our, our muscles' ability to activate, but uh, so that our, we're making our muscles work for us, if that makes sense. And I'm getting into this deep philosophy stuff, which you probably don't care about, but guys like me geek out on this stuff. So, breathing, uh, very important. There's lots of different ways to breathe, uh, apart from the whole inhale-exhale thing. Uh, but, in general, for the vast majority of people, you want to do what's called a discipline level uh, breath. And that is during the hard portion of the exercise, the portion where you're pushing yourself back up to standing, that's when you're going to be exhaling. So you go into your lunge, you can either inhale at the top or inhale on your way down. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. For most people, that's how you're going to do it. And, and in combination with that exhale during the the concentric portion of the exercise, you're going to be tightening your, your core musculature. You know, and, and again, this is setting a foundation for when you start doing more advanced variations, because when you add additional weight to your lunge, that core activation is going to matter. So getting that breath dial in and, and locking everything down, locking down all this muscles, packing your shoulders down, keeping your spine aligned, that's going to become very important. So what else? I don't think there's that much more to talk about. Maybe there is and I've just forgotten. 
And if I have, please let me know. And, and if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Be happy to be happy to help. I love bringing these videos to you. I wish I could bring more. Um, time is becoming a little bit uh, less available with the uh, onset of children and multiple jobs. But I love doing this. And again, if you have any questions about basic lunge, lunge technique or different variations, please let me know. Leave a comment below or find me on my website. Uh, send me a, a message via email or Facebook or Twitter. Um, you can find me, type in my name, John Sifferman, into any search engine and you'll find some way to contact me. Please get in touch with me. And I'd love to hear what you think. If, uh, if this helped you at all, please let me know. I appreciate all the feedback and it helps me bring even more and even better information to you in the future. So, hope I will see you around the internet soon. And I guess that's all. I'm John Sifferman from physicalliving.com. Take care.